Today I'll be starting a series on Brentford FC. They have been just been promoted to the Premier League this year, and they're a very special team because of their unique philosophy and vision for the club. They're extremely data-driven and analytical to almost everything that goes around in the club, from transfers, set pieces, and fitness. All of these decisions actually stem from the owner of the club, Matthew Benham. We'll talk more about him later on in this video. As we all know, top tier teams like Man City, Chelsea, Barcelona, they definitely have a strong data department or a strong data team, but you'd be surprised that a lot of these big teams actually don't really use data analytics in their final decisions, like um, crucial decisions, in fact, like buying or selling a player. Having said that, you still see managers who are very comfortable with data, like Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea, using stats to make crucial decisions. For example, two weeks ago, they played Villarreal for the Super Cup, and Thomas Tuchel decided to take out their starting goalkeeper, Benjamin Mendy, um, during the penalty shoot shootouts. He was subbed out because Kepa, who replaced Mendy, had the best percentage at saving penalties. The big decision paid off and Kepa went on to save two penalties and basically won Chelsea their Super Cup. So you do still see big teams using analytics to make crucial decisions, but it's not as widespread as it looks like. So the purpose of this series isn't really to cover every single update that's going on at Brentford FC. It's more to focus on what they're doing analytically to beat their opponents in one of the toughest league in the world. So for this first video, I'll be doing an introduction of Brentford FC, um, going over the owner, the co-director, um, and then I'll talk about the analytics within the club, like what is happening um, right now. And thirdly, I'll talk about their game against Arsenal and Crystal Palace. And for the fourth thing I want to go over is going over actually my own Python script and seeing the underlying um, statistics for Brentford players and Brentford as a team. And the last part of this video, I want to give my recommendation of what to read to learn more about football analytics. So that's what inspired me to really look into Brentford and find out about Brentford. So for the introduction of Brentford FC, firstly, they're owned by Matthew Benham, who um, is a lifelong Brentford fan. And he actually bought the team when the club was at um, was in a financial crisis. He paid around I think 500,000 to 700,000 pounds to um, kind of save the team. He studied physics at the University of Oxford and after that he actually worked in investment banking and at a couple of insurance companies. He then created Smart Odds, which is a company that um, uses statistics and math to kind of model football data to provide to gamblers for gamblers to make better decisions. It is said that Matthew Benham got very wealthy from betting on football matches using statistical and mathematical models. The co-director of Brentford FC is Rasmus Ankerson. He and Benham actually worked together at Michelin FC, which is a Danish football club where Benham was the owner and Rasmus was the chairman. Um, Benham invested around $10 million to um, Michelin FC, probably um, more um, as of now where they kind of ran Michelin FC like a football experiment to test out his analytical ideas um, to this club. And in fact, they were very successful with this um, little experiment. Um, Michelin FC won this Danish Superliga and in that year, one third of their goals were scored by set pieces, which is something they found to be um, very important to focus on to score more goals. They won three league titles in seven years with two second place finishes and they basically found that these analytical decisions um, around Michelin FC was very successful to, um, to win more matches, to win league titles. So they kind of decided to use what they learned um, at Michelin FC to Brentford FC by investing more money, by investing more time and effort into this club. So moving on to analytics at Brentford FC, Benham invested over 90 million pounds into Brentford FC, probably more so now. There were a lot of decisions that um, come from the commitment of embracing analytics in their club. For example, Benham decided to fire um, employees and managers, Mark Warburton, because of his um, philosophical differences. So Warburton didn't really um, like the idea of heavily relying on statistics and analytics for key decisions around the club which is why um, 
they thought it was best for him to leave even though he had a lot of success during his time. Another way they use analytics in the club is through transfers. So obviously buying players um, who show a lot of talent statistically and buying them for a low cost and selling them for a huge amount of profit. There are a lot of examples. Um, you see Premier League players today like Ben Rama, he's on fire lately. He was actually bought at Brentford at 3.8 million and sold for around 40 million to West Ham. Um, Ollie Watkins, he was a big star last year for Aston Villa, bought for, at 2.3 million um, at Brentford and sold for 36 million. And um, players like Malpe also at Brighton. Another really important way that Brentford uses analytics in their decisions is by focusing on set pieces. They found that by focusing on set pieces, um, by perfecting some choreography for the team um, in free kicks and even throw-ins that they can score more goals. A lot of teams, even big teams, don't really um, have some routine for the set pieces because it's really a painstaking process by standing around the ball, talking about um, which player is going to go where. But Brentford realized that by focusing on set pieces, by going through this slow and painful process will actually lead to more goals, which is why I talked about in Mitchell and FC, one third of their goals came, came from set pieces. So they realized after learning that, they wanted to implement that into Brentford FC as the owners of the club and the co-directors are the same people. Brentford FC actually worked with um, Thomas Gronmark, who is a throw-in specialist. I think he has the world record of the longest throw-in. And he's worked with Brentford, and I think right now he's working with Liverpool to teach these players what kind of techniques to use to throw the ball further, um, which is really interesting. I mean, it's quite a sight to see Beck, their center back, launch in a throw-in all the way to the penalty box and Norgard to head that in. Even in the game, in game week two, their nil-nil um, draw with um, Crystal Palace, you can see that they really focus on set pieces. It's clear to see that they have a routine every time they have the ball is on the ground or they're about to throw the ball. So for this next part, I'll be talking about my Python script and focusing a lot on expected goals, expected assists, the underlying statistics. Brentford actually uses stuff like expected goals, expected assists, and these underlying metrics, um, they don't really look at the results to determine whether to maybe sack a manager, to determine how well they're doing, because they believe that um, things will, re will regress to the expected value, which is a very statistical and analytical view um, compared to other teams where if they lose five games in a row, um, the manager will be sacked and that kind of thinking. So when they evaluate players, whether to buy them or to play them on the field, they probably look at these underlying metrics rather than goals or assists because these players might have gone lucky or um, might have had bad luck. So this is a table showing the Premier League teams ranked from highest to lowest in MPXGD. It's really a simple metric and all it means is the no penalty expected goal difference. So. All it is is MPXG minus MPXGA. MPXG just means the no penalty expected goals and XGA means the um, expected goals against. So all it is saying is how many goals is this team expected to score minus how many goals was it expected to concede and pr which produces MPXGD. So it's really a good metric to show um, how well a team is doing offensively and defensively. So Chelsea is at, the, is at the top right now and Arsenal are unfortunately at the bottom. So here you can see that Brentford is ranked ninth after two game weeks. They were expect, expected to score 2.6 goals and they were expected to concede 1.63. In reality, they did score two goals, and but they conceded zero goals. So. Um, if I was the manager, I would be um, thinking that we got lucky in these two games that we were actually expected to concede um, 1.63 goals. So something what the manager would say would be that, oh, we still need to focus on our defensive duties. We can't um, be complacent about that. I've also compiled the underlying statistics for each player to kind of identify 
um, who is the best player in terms of their underlying statistics. So this is probably uh, along the lines of what Brentford uses to evaluate their own players. We can see some key players from last season, like Ivan Toney. Um, he's not doing so bad right now, not doing amazingly, but um, we should take this information with a, with a grain of salt because it's only been two game weeks, which is a very small sample size to, um, to mean much. But it's really interesting to see the underlying statistics of all the players um, as we go along um, through the game weeks. So as we go along in the season, I'll be looking into these players' expected goals, expected assists, other metrics like um, expected goal chain, which I'll explain at a later video, um, looking at their key passes and kind of sometimes maybe combine these metrics together to have more value into these expected metrics. So if you want to learn more about football analytics, there is one book that I really recommend for everyone to read if you're interested in this. Um, it's called Football Hackers, The Science and Art of a Data Revolution by Christoph Biermann. And it's really a good book for any, especially beginners, to learn about um, these underlying metrics, how the football world um, is embracing analytics, key people like Matthew Benham, um, Thomas Tuchel, Rasmus Ankerson, a lot of other um, people that really propelled data science into the football world. I really hope that Brentford does really well in the Premier League using analytics because I'm a huge supporter of analytics, data science, and using data to make better decisions and making objective decisions, um, whether that's for a company to gain more profit, gain more customer engagement, or a football club to win more games. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and will enjoy the series, and I'll see everyone in the second video. Thank you for watching.